Yo, what is up, guys? So we have a new rarity coming out, guys. I know we don't have Ghost Rares and Ultimate Rares. Uh, well, unless, of course, you count some of the other packs. But in the base sets. Uh, now we have a new rarity called Extra Secret Rare. <laughs> like, what? Uh, but anyways, yeah, it says 20th Secret Rare. says uh, Extra Secret Rare Foiling with the red text name. So uh, pretty interesting. Here's like a zoomed up picture on the new rarity that's going to be coming out in the game. Now, uh, as far as in the uh, English version, we actually already have red cards. Uh, now, if you guys didn't know, there are things called Duelist Leagues. Uh, and uh, they actually have like red text in them. Uh, but looking at the picture, I'm not sure if this is due to its scan, but like it almost looks like what I really disliked, which was the Platinum Rares. I don't know if you guys remember these, but these, to me, these were ugly. I don't know, let me know if you guys thought Platinum Rares were ugly. Maybe it was just me, but I, I absolutely hated how these look. They look like bootleg Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but uh, I don't really mind the red text. The red text is kind of cool, but it, it depends on how it actually looks, obviously in person, because we're looking at a monitor. But there are some new cards to check out as well, so let's go ahead and check out a bunch of them. There's uh, apparently going to be, there's like one of these, uh, I don't know if this is a uh, a new archetype, but there's Cyber Dragon Link Monster. That's, that's pretty hype. All Alright, let's start from the top, guys. Let's check out the new cards. Wait, okay, there we go. So we have the new uh, Demise Supreme King of Armageddon, which is uh, the guy on the left over here. Let's zoom up op, on the guy. Again, this is the one on the left. So, anyways, so level 10. 3,000, 3,000. It says you can only ritual summon this card with Endless of the World. This card's name is treated as Demise King of Armageddon while it is face up uh, or in your hand. If this card was ritual summoned, ritual monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle. And if this card was ritual summon using only ritual monsters, you don't have to pay life points to activate its effect. And its effect is once per turn, you need to pay 2,000 life points to destroy it. All, all as many other cards on the field as possible. If you do inflict 200 damage to your opponent for each card destroyed by this effect. Yo, is this Chaos Emperor Dragon like a, a bootleg? <laughs> Are they running out of ideas taking banned cards? I mean, it's what it kind of reminds me of. Uh, anyways, next up we have the other card which is on the right, which... Uh, that looks pretty good. I, 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 like the, I like the white hair. Anyways, uh, this is Ruined Graceful Queen of Oblivion. So it's level 10 Light Fairy Ritual Monster, 2900 attack. Come on, just give her an extra 100, man. All right, 3000 defense, but it says you can only use uh, Ritual Summon this card with Endless uh, of the World, which is the same card you used before. Anyways, this card uh, is treated as Ruined Queen of Oblivion, while it is face up or in your hand. If this card was Ritual Summon, Ritual Monsters you control cannot be destroyed by card effects. Uh, if this card was Ritual Summon using only Ritual Monsters, it can make a second attack during each battle phase. The fourth effect says if this card destroys a monster by battle, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to the destroyed monster's original attack. That's pretty good, especially if you combine it with being able to have a second attack. That's, dude, that's really good. You just equip like, oh gosh, that, that actually is pretty dirty. If you, if you wanted to run like an equip card, I don't know. I think that that's ridiculous. Um, but I mean, more likely, I don't know. Maybe maybe you'll actually be able to ritual summon using ritual monsters. That just seems very counterproductive. A ritual summon for this? Okay, now a ritual summon for this? All right, anyways, uh, Tobias Fiend of Armageddon. So we got like, I guess the, the chibi, the minis of them. Uh, anyways, so the first one is the one on the left, which is at 1800 attack. says you can summon this card with Endless of the World. This card's name is treated as Demise King of Armageddon while it's face up or in your hand. This card is ritual summoned, you can destroy one face up monster. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one face up ritual monster you control. While that monster is face up on your field, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to your ritual monster's effect activation. That's a pretty good effect. It's just like generic ritual support. Um, anyways, next up, uh, this is the uh, Angel, the, the Chibi one. Uh, but uh, anyways, you can ritual summon this card with Endless of the World. Oh, 1700 attack, 1000 defense. And uh, anyways, it says you can only, uh, you can ritual summon this card with Endless of the World. Uh, and it says this card's name is treated as uh, Rune, Queen of Oblivion, while it's face up or in your hand. Uh, if this card is ritual summon, you can activate this effect. This card can make up to two attacks on monster during each battle phase. 1700 attack, yeah, you got me on that. Anyways, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one face of ritual monster you control, let it face up or on your field. If a ritual monster you control declares an attack, your opponent can't activate cards or effects. Okay, so I think that, the, like, I guess if you if you combine them all to the Megazord, I mean, y your opponent can't activate effects in response, can't be destroyed by battle, can't be destroyed by card effects, your opponent can't activate cards when you're declaring an attack. It's a lot of stuff, but I mean, I, I just feel like double attacks on a 17, that's, that's, like, who's using that, right? All right, maybe some of these cards will make, like, more sense of it. Um, because, again, like, ritual summon for this, then you ritual summon, like, double? Anyways, Break of the World. 
which is the field spell card. Oh, so they have a field spell now. Once turn, you can target one ritual monster you control, reveal one ritual monster from your hand until the end of this turn. That revealed ritual monster's level becomes the same as the target monster's level until the end of this turn. Oh, okay. So it makes it easier. Uh, anyways, once per turn, if Demise King of Armageddon or Ruin Queen of Oblivion is ritual summoned to your field, you get to activate one of these effects. Draw a card or destroy a card in the field. Alright, so it kind of replaces itself right there, and on top of that, you have the ability to ritual summon just immediately without, like, using both of the monsters. But, anyways, Endless of the World, which is the most important card, I feel like. A uh, ritual spell card that says this card is used to ritual summon a Ruin Queen of Oblivion or Demise King of Armageddon. First effect says tribute monsters you control whose total levels equal or exceed level of the ritual monster you ritual summon and or ritual summon that monster from your hand. During your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you get to shuffle this card from your graveyard into the deck and add one end of the world uh, from your deck to your hand. And then you could add one Ruin Queen or Demise King. From your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, I, I still don't think it makes like the deck like super strong. I don't know if you guys have played against Demise King, but like at the end of the day, it just seems like a bootleg JD. Um, because, well, I mean, first off, you got a ritual summon. I mean, if you really want to ritual summon this guy, then you go, you gotta have the field spell, change the level. Like, you're asking for just too many things. Yeah, but once it comes out, it's popping everything. That's kind of cool. And it burns your opponent, and you might be able to just attack him one shot him for game. But I just feel like Judgment Dragon is just an easier summon condition if you like to. You know, have the pay pay life points do an effect uh, to pop everything. Uh, this one does have the potential burn, but I don't know. You guys, let me know if you guys think it's good. Uh, maybe we have more cards. Oh, Return of the World. Maybe another one. Okay, so it's a continuous trap card that says uh, you can only use either this card's name first or second effect per turn, and only once that turn. When this card is activated, banish one ritual monster from your deck. Uh, you can send this card to the graveyard to activate one of these effects. Ritual summon the ritual summon monster banished by this card's first effect. Uh, by tributing one monster you control or have in your hand, whose level exceed or level of the ritual monster you ritual summon, or shuffle one ritual monster from your graveyard into the deck instead of tributing. Okay, that's kind of interesting. That's some utility. Um, but in Demise King, you want to be fast. This is setting cards. Whoops. I just feel like, uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Alright. Anyways, we have the, uh, de de Devil... Oh, uh, Devi, Devi Ritual Tales Mandra. All right, so we got some new cards. How many, how many cards? And then we got the Cyber Dragon. And is that it? Is that it? We just got Cyber Dragon. Okay. Anyways, so uh, the Devi, Devi Ritual uh, Tales Mandra over here. It's a level six dark plant effect monster. Zero, zero. So you can only use this card's name first or second effect per turn and only once that turn. The first effect says you can reveal one ritual monster from your hand to special summon this card from your hand and one dev ritual monster except for itself. Okay. Uh, the second effect is if this card is special summoned from the deck, you get to add one ritual monster from your deck to your hand. Okay. Um, it is level 6 though. <laughs> uh, and the third effect is you can't special summon monsters from the extra deck. Okay, that's that's fine. Uh, then we have the dev ritual candle. Oh, I get, I get the, oh, okay, I get it, because it's a candle. <laughs> the puns, man. All right, it was level four light pyro effect monster. Uh, zero, zero. It says you can only either use the first, uh, this card's name first or second effect once per turn, only once that turn. Uh, you can reveal one ritual spell card from your hand, especially on this card from your hand, and add one Devi ritual monster, except for itself. It's going to special some from the deck. You get to add one ritual spell card from your deck to your hand. Third effect is... You uh, cannot spell some monsters from the extra deck. Okay. Um, so, obviously, there's a downside with this. I mean, what level were they? It was a uh, six and a four. Interesting choices. Because um, I was just thinking, you just summon them out, go for this card, and then you just add one. And then, obviously, you could try to go for things. But then it really lim limits your place because you can't spell some from the extra deck. So, I guess that that was out of it. Because <laughs> I, I was already thinking when it was light level four, I'm all dark light BLS. But yeah, it's not going to work with Summoner Monk. Um, but I guess since you'd be tributing the monsters, anyways, for your rituals. You could argue that the, that's the point of it, is to support rituals. But, um, we got a, a new Cyber Dragon Link monster, Cyber Dragon Psyker. Uh, but anyways, let's check out, oh, the Dragoonities! Wow, dude, Dragoonity support? Wow. Alright, so, uh, Dragoonity Ascalion, a level 10 Wind Dragon Synchro Effect monster, 3300 attack, 22 defense, uh, requirements as materials, one Dragoonity Center, plus one or more non-tuner monsters. You can lose this card's name second effect once per turn. The first effect is you can banish one Dragoonity monster for your graveyard, target one monster your opponent controls and banish it. Uh, the second effect says if this card was synchro summoned and its owner's control is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, or by card, either by battle or by card effect, you get to special summon one Dragoonity synchro monster with 3,000 less attack from your, your extra deck. 
this much summon true distance or something. Hey, that's a pretty cool effect. Uh, I mean, I honestly, it's been so long since I played against or seen anyone play Dragoonies, but if I remember correctly, it was just like Stardust Dragon Spam. That's kind of how the deck was. That's how people played it before. Um, obviously, that was not like the, the most optimal way, but um, Dragoonie players. Is this good? I, I don't know. I think there are better options for Synchro decks. Um, I mean, that deck just like loses the hand traps on some next level, but Maxi is gone, technically. All right. So the last card that we're going to check out is the new Cyber Dragon Link Monster. That's cool. I'm excited to check this out. So it's a Link 2 Light Machine Link Effect Monster, 2100 attack. Its links are at the left and the bottom. Its materials are two machine monsters, including Cyber Dragon. Uh, it says you can only use this card theme second effect once per turn. The first effect says this card is becomes Cyber Dragon while it's face up or in the graveyard. The second effect says during the battle phase, if this card did not attack as a quick effect, uh, you can target one machine monster you control with 2100 or more attack, it gains 2100 attack and defense until the end of this turn. Also, any battle damage either player receives from battles involving this card becomes zero. So then turn. Okay, so I guess it kind of protects itself in that sense where it's like, oh, well, okay, you're gonna have more attack. Wait, is this during your opponent's battle phase? Because. Hmm. I'm actually wondering because it says during the battle phase, not your battle phase. So, I, I guess it would work. I think you're protected. It's 4,200, so very little things can run over it. But if you're using two, like, machine monsters, including a Cyber Dragon, I'm not sure how I feel about this card, because, like, why not just make Cyber Dragon Infinity, right? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I just, I don't see a, a real, like, immediate use for this, but maybe I'm, I'm not thinking outside the box. Uh, maybe with some, like, some type of fusion, this could be really good. But then, the, again, you lose, like, even if you're doubling it, it doesn't, like, help with the whole, like, well, neither, it's like, what is it, uh, 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 any battle damage either player receives from this card becomes zero. But it is any machine monster you control, but it has to have 21. From, wait, wait, hold on, actually, hold on. It says this card. So does that apply to, I don't think that applies to its effect, right? Because if I boost something else, okay, if, if I boost itself, yeah, I understand. But if I boost something else, does that make it so, like, they could still take the damage? If so, then that, that's totally cool. Um, because that could actually boost a limit removal. Oh my gosh, dude. The otter don't like that card, I'm going to not like it more. Uh, again, it's more of a cheesy thing anyways, but... That's interesting, but wow, that was a lot of stuff to go over, guys. Let me know what you think of this new rarity. I honestly, I'm cool with, like, the, the, the red text. Again, this is Duelist Lady. They had green, all these other colors. It's cool. Purple was actually one of my favorites. It actually looks really nice. But at the same time, dude, the platinum rares, if, 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 if these cards are going to look like platinum rares, because that's kind of what it looks like to me. It just looks ugly. I mean, keep the red text. That's cool. And the name, the extra secret rare. I think we could have come up with a better name. I know people hated the totally awesome name. I actually didn't really mind that one that much. But let me know what you guys think of the new rarity, the extra secret rare. What would you guys have called it? Because keep in mind, uh, they might change the name of the TCG uh, in the future when we uh, get these, uh, hopefully pretty soon. I don't know when we'll get the announcement, but that's pretty cool. But, yo, I still like Ghost Rares. Ghost Rares, the best rarity. Extra secret rare. We'll wait and see what they look like when they come up. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button for more Yu-Gi-Oh! news and Yu-Gi-Oh! gameplay. Except for Duel Links. Well, sometimes Duel Links.